Next, I'm going to talk about Git workflows. And again, here's our slide. So version control is an important part of software development. Some of you may be familiar with Git, so I don't plan to cover the basics commands, although we are willing to help anyone during discussions in the hands-on area in the afternoon. What we are going to cover are the mechanisms that workflows use so that you can determine what will be useful. I was looking at the chat. I don't know if there's something important there. I just skipped into this section, but uh, feel free to unmute David and let me know. <laughs> I will show, um, show you some different types of Git workflow models and some Git workflows used successfully by several scientific software teams. Many items are distributed and team, I mean, many teams are distributed and team members have a separation of concerns. So they may work on various parts of the code. They want to collaborate efficiently so that the code will be sustainable and produce correct results. Git workflows help many scientific software teams attain these goals. The basic work, uh, centralized, the basic Git workflow is a central, I'm sorry, it's not really good. The basic workflow is a centralized workflow. And this is the type of workflow that many of the older types of version control systems use. Some of you may have worked with subversion or other um, workflows where there's a centralized remote repo. By default, when you start a Git repo, repo, it will have a main branch. And if you use the model, this model, it can work for some personal development or maybe a very small team with good communication. Since all commits to the remote repo go in the one location, it can become very difficult to collaborate since developers may commit at different frequencies. And it becomes hard to ensure interfaces work well. Testing also can be very difficult. So um, I'm going to go over other models and this model and those will be in the Atlassian Bitbucket site. So if you want to get deeper into those, um, into these types of workflows, you can look there for more details. Next, we'll look at the mechanisms that help us create workflows that are more um, amenable to collaboration. Those mecha mechanisms are branches, pull requests, and forks. These mechanisms allow collaborators to build workflows and policies that aid collaboration. Developers can easily work on different parts of the code in parallel. Reviews and testing can be performed and before merging into the main branch, and contributors can be contributors can contribute from outside the team. Branches are the basic mechanism used to build a variety of Git workflow models. They create independent lines of development. Branches enable developers to work on a feature or an issue separate from main. Those changes can be tested and refined before merging into main. A developer can work in a branch and make commits to the remote repo without changing the main branch. So the main branch is protected and changes are stored and can be shared through the remote repository. Once a feature has been completed and tested, it can be integrated through a merge commit. Workflow policies aid collaboration. Policies prevent unnecessary complexity and make collaboration more efficient. In the case illustrated, there are two branches with names that are not meaningful, and they start and end from different places. Imagine that the policies if any exist, are not clearly documented, and there are many software developers doing this, these, these type of changes on the team. The result would be a repository that has many complex branches and parallel development would be difficult. Some policies that might help prevent the problems that are depicted in this diagram include giving your branch a descriptive or meaningful name. Name the branch for the feature you are implementing or link it to an issue. You may set a policy for where branches start, such as all branches must begin from main and be merged into main or another principal branch. A special type of branch is a feature branch. 
In the feature branch, developers usually work on some sort of feature, and when it is finished, it will be merged into the main branch, and then the feature branch can be discarded. Developers can work on different features and fixes simultaneously. The example on the right show two people, Alice and Bob, working on one repository. You can see that Alice has downloaded the main branch to her local machine and has created a feature branch for, for Ad Solver A. She started from commit C of the main branch and has added uh, four commits. Bob also downloaded a copy of the repo to his local machine and started a branch to work on issue 151 but he apparently downloaded earlier and started from commit B of the main branch, then added uh, three commits. You can also see at this point in time, the remote repository had a main branch with commits A, B, and C. Their development causes a divergence from main and each other, but can be merged to collaboration since they are using separate branches. This diagram shows a feature branch diversion in Bob's local repository. You can see that Alice merges into the main branch in her local repo and that she has no issue. So she pushes to the remote repository and deletes the branch. At this point, her local repository has identical commits to the remote repository. Alice merged her commits and pushed to the, the remote repository first. Bob then pulls main from the remote repository and gets Alice's changes in his main branch. But he tries to merge his changes into main, he gets a merge conflict. He will need to fix the conflicts and at that this time may want to communicate with Alice for the basic path for the best path forward. Bob has a feature race condition since he started from commit B. So Bob rebases issue 151 branch to the latest commit on main. He can push his branch to the remote repository and Alice and Bob can review the branch, communicate and work together to resolve the condition conflicts in the branch. The feature branch can then be tested, and when all is fixed, it can be merged into main. Feature branches are usually deleted after merging into the main branch, but many workflows have lifetime branches in addition to main. Lifetime branches are not ever deleted, or they may at least exist for a very long time. These branches are in all the copies of the repository and serve different purposes. For instance, there may be a development branch where changes are made frequently and may not be stable. And there may be production and pre-production branches that are considered stable and are released. There may be other lifelong branches, such as ones for testing. The Git workflow of a particular repository is comprised of the lifetime branches and policies for their use. In this example, the policy is that feature branches start from the main branch and are committed to the development branch. They are most likely reviewed and tested before commit to development and may undergo even stricter tests or need to comply with project policies before being merged into main from development. You can see in this case that there are several commits into development from the Ad Solver A branch. Then apparently it was finalized and committed into main. The next mechanism for collaboration in Git workflows is the pull request, or if you're using GitLab, it is called a merge request. Once changes are completed in a feature branch, the developer can create a pull request. This alerts the development team that changes are ready to be merged into the main branch. A pull request should be reviewed and tested before the merge. This allows discussion about the pull request and possible iterations of more commits on the branch during the review. A reviewer or set of reviewers can be requested for the pull request. Maybe you want to select an expert in a particular area to review the feature you just developed. Or you might make sure the person who submitted an issue that you are fixing reviews the change and tests it. As with branches, setting policies for pull requests are part of an, the overall Git workflow. Policies can include things like what tests must pass and how many approvals or who, um, yeah, the makeup of, of whoever is going to approve it are required before uh, merging. The last mechanism I'm gonna talk about are forks. Forks are very powerful mechanisms for collaboration especially in open so source software. 
A fork is a complete copy of all the branches of a repository into a different account. Anyone who has access, read access to the repository can create a fork of it. For instance, if some users of a code that are not on the main development team want to add some special feature to the code for their own use, they can fork the repository and work on a feature in a branch in their work. They can even give write access to um, their collaborators that don't have write access to the main, uh, the upstream repository. And um, if they complete the feature and feel that it would be useful to the wider community, they can suggest the addition of the feature through a pull request to the original or what is called the upstream repository. The maintainers of the upstream repository can review their features and decide whether or not to merge it into the, their main repository. So forks are valuable con uh, for contract are valuable for contributions from outside sources, but also keep the control of the original repository within the team that maintains it. Since maintainers keep control of the original repository, they can prevent a, the huge number of branches that might occur if there was another, another model. There are some caveats. Uh, if you fork a public repository, your, that repository is also public. And when making changes in a fork, you should always make your changes in branches other than main. And, uh, <clears throat> but issues from the main, the upstream repository and uh, pull requests will not be in your fork. And forks are very valuable to the open source community since they allow contributions from outside the um, software team. Those were the main Git mechanisms that are used for Git workflows. Now I'm going to briefly talk about peer code review. This is an important part of the software development process. Peer code review is when developers convene to check code for implementations, that coding guidelines are followed, and to find errors. Code reviews can accelerate the software development process since they are, there are many benefits. We outline some of the benefits here. Um, discussions about the change can lead to more iterations on the code to improve or correct it. During a code review, reviewers may not have worked on the part of the code under review, and that gives them a better understanding of a part that they may have not looked at before. And it also can give them a better understanding of the overall project and its requirements. The impact of the change on other parts of the code can be assessed. Will it break other parts? What are the implications of changes to interfaces of other parts? These are the things that uh, can be considered. Also, there is a benefit of learning new techniques that can be applied to the own reviewers um, development process. Here's a link to a short blog by Hugo Sousa on how to code review a PR. It's a quick read and may help you get started, including um, these types of reviews for your project. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just see that we're having, I'm running over. So I'll go through this a little bit quicker. Um, so far, I've talked about the mechanisms of Git workflows. Now I'm going to review some of the models. How much time do I have, David? Well, we're actually into the break already. So oh, my yeah, goodness. I think you need to wind up pretty quickly. OK, so we do have these models of different complexity. So I would suggest that you go through them um, they're through the slides, and if you have any questions during the discussion later, we can go through some of them. Um, it's nice to look at these uh, projects, what they've actually done, and you can base some of yours on that. I thought I had 45 minutes total. Um, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I can't do the math that fast. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that, folks. Yes. Um. To to quickly recap the point of these the slides that Pat. Let me go uh, through having... this slide real quick. Yeah. David, okay. Here you go. The main thing is that um, 
you need to adopt what's good for your team. And if you would go through some of these models, and if you want to during this afternoon's session, we can do that. Um, start simple and add complexity where it's needed. That's the biggest thing. Sorry about going over. <laughs> yeah, and let, let me just add there that the the different examples that Pat had to skip over um, were really the you know the question primary questions there are about what is stable and uh, what is you know changing and how often it's changing and things like that and you can make policy decisions that will help you uh, have things that have certain amounts of stability that you can sort of promise to users of that branch or whatever um, to to give them certain characteristics to facilitate your work together. And I can't stop sharing, so somebody else can stop me, I think.